1883, a train wound its way through these rugged badlands in North Dakota. On board was a 24-year-old state assemblyman from New York who'd come here to hunt bison. His name was Theodore Roosevelt. Out on the prairie, the future president only managed to kill one bison, but ended up falling in love with the beauty of this wild western land. By the time he headed back to New York, he bought a major interest in a local ranch and ordered this small cabin to be built for him to live in when he returned. It was moved here to the town of Medora and restored in 1959. A few months later, the cabin provided a much needed refuge to Roosevelt after his wife and mother both died on Valentine's Day, 1884. Over the next few years, the restorative power of the region's fertile river valleys and rocky hills drew him back again and again. To give himself more room to roam, he bought an eight-mile stretch along the banks of the Little Missouri River for $400, a place called Elkhorn Ranch. Today, the ranch house is gone. It was during his visits here that he found the solace he needed and developed the conservationist values that shaped the rest of his life. I would not have been president, he later said, had it not been for my experience in North Dakota. Now, anyone can enjoy this landscape here at Theodore Roosevelt National Park, which lies on land where he once herded cattle. Each year, over 600,000 people visit the park to hike and enjoy the same natural beauty that once healed the soul of America's 26th president. Today, the park lies in the southwestern corner of North Dakota. But when Roosevelt stayed here, the states of North Dakota and South Dakota didn't yet exist. Roosevelt first knew this land only as the Dakota Territory. <laughs> 